to lead us to Hungary now, we have Miklas, who will share how uh, data can really benefit uh, health systems, right? And all yours. Thank you for the invitation. I, I think I should wait a little bit for the presentation to come. It will come. Okay. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, really thanks for the thank for the invitation. And I have to say that whenever we have some data access issue, we are always turning to inspiration towards the Nordic countries and Estonia. And and uh, having a president in Estonia who is who is really for e-governance, this this is a this is a real asset. And you know. I'm, I was uh, Minister of State for Health between 2010 and 14, and, um, and now I'm back at the Samuels University running a, a health services management training center and also an institute for digital health sciences. Uh, and when I was preparing for the, uh, for, for the uh, government uh, tasks, uh, I, was, I was involved in a shadow government uh, arrangement, and I recognized that, uh, and, and it, I was surprised when a, uh, when a British uh, colleague of ours, uh, looking at the data we had in the Hungarian healthcare system, uh, he asked the, the best Hungarian data expert who is cleaning data, uh, connecting streams of data, following the regulatory changes, and, uh, and the British colleague asked, uh, who do you write your reports to? And the Hungarian data expert said, what reports? And that was the moment, that was the moment when, I, uh, when I knew that if I really want to change uh, the Hungarian healthcare system and really want to fight for the sustainability of the Hungarian healthcare system, then I have to look on data differently and I have to, have to use solutions that are different. You know, in 2010, Hungary was facing a three plus one crisis. Uh, we had a public health crisis. We are very good at communicable diseases, but we are very bad at non-communicable lifestyle diseases, leading some of the mortality charts. Uh, we were really struggling with uh, the sustainability of care provision system, uh, and, uh, and we had a, a large problem with the migration of health labor force, doctors and nurses migrating to more rich uh, EU countries, and on top of everything, we received the present, the, the world economic crisis. And um, I had three missions, uh, to, to make Hungarians healthier and more cautious for their health. Uh, I had to make the healthcare system good quality, sustainable, equitable, uh, and I have to have um, uh, uh, motivated, innovative people in the system. And I had a bonus mission. Uh, the previous government lost the elections because of, uh, because of health issues, so I had to do my job in a way that uh, they win the elections or at least they do not lose uh, by uh, what I was uh, uh, planning to do. And you know, uh, we did change, uh, we really cautiously developed a change management methodology, not because we wanted to uh, become change management champions, but we wanted to break this vicious cycle. Uh, there was a vicious cycle in Hungarian health policy. A new guy came. Uh, he had an idea. Of course, his idea had to be better than the previous government's idea. Uh, and they had to intervene into the system. And they had to do it fast. Um, and, they had, and for certain reasons, they had to leave. And then there was a vacuum and disturbance uh, left behind for three to six months. Uh, they did not know what will happen. They did not know who will stay, who will go. And then there came the new guy. 
had an idea, intervened into the system. Of course, you have to do unpopular things fast. Uh, so they had to leave, vacuum and disturbance. And this stuff happened 12 times in 20 years, leaving, leaving about 20 months life expectancy for a person in my chair. I spent there a whole mandate, uh, 48 months, not just because we wanted to raise the, uh, the average, but we really knew that a meaningful reform is not just one government. Um, so I will show you how, how we did uh, use the data. And uh, I do it in a way uh, the master cooks do when they, when they show how, how you can cook a delicious dinner in 15 minutes from the fridge leftover. Uh, and uh, I have uh, loaded a lot of case studies, so I, this should be a joyride if I want to finish on time. Uh, but let's start with the health system management case study. You know, um, the, the goal was to have an efficient system and to have uh, evidence-based decisions. And you know, we had the ingredients. We have hospital reports, health insurance, and finance-related data. Maybe in England or in the UK, you won't be able to do this because you do not have a personal ID uh, for the patients, but we can, uh, we can uh, connect all the data. Uh, and uh, let's show you, we, we just put the care data uh, on map. And what you see here is the migration of patients for care from one county to the other. So the county in the center, the darkest one, uh, is, uh, uh, is for, uh, they only keep 68% of the patients. Uh, all the others go to other counties. From here, they do not move because there is a, uh, there is a university level hospital, so the highest level of care can be provided there. Yeah, they, they move from the above uh, county to the, uh, to the below one, but from the below one, nobody moves because there is also a university. Uh, and we looked on, we modeled access times, for example, in trauma care. We wanted to see how secure, how safe uh, the distribution of care. We wanted to have better uh, patient pathways. We wanted to save lives with that. But we also looked on the patient, uh, uh, patient movements. This is the cancer care movement. The dots are hospitals. Uh, those dots are hospitals, and the, and the lines are uh, patient movements of at least 10 patients. Cancer is a serious disease. Uh, you really look for certain cure, and you, you are looking for hope, so you migrate around the country. We looked on the Budapest cancer networks. Of course, you can see the central locations of cancer care. Sorry, from the speaker, I could not show that. Uh, but you could also ask questions. Why are that many patients moving between these two hospitals in Budapest? Is it a lack of money, lack of staff, lack of therapeutic capacity, diagnostics capacity? And indeed, uh, here they had radiotherapy, so they received five, uh, 500 patients each month, and there they had molecular pathology diagnostics. But here, you do not want to invest in, uh, in radiotherapy uh, in, in, on the same, uh, on the two different sides of River Danube in Budapest, uh, because that's very expensive. So here the solution was to bring those institutions closer uh, and, uh, and make it uh, more obvious where the patient should go. At the end, we just created, uh, created uh, care regions, planning regions, and out, outside these regions there is not too much patient movement, so we could plan the patient pathways and we could plan the capacities. Uh, the, uh, the results were patient pathways, capacity planning, um, and improving health indicators. Yes, we saved lives. Uh, in one and a half years, the liver metastasis uh, operations were increased by 50%. Uh, so those patients were sort of lost of these patient migration uh, schemes that we uncovered. So the next one is management control. Uh, so we really, uh, and, and this chart is my, is my teddy bear, I should say. Uh, and this is, uh, among others, uh, in Hungary we took over the ownership of all the hospitals into, this, into state hands. The blue dots uh, are hospitals. The yellow dots uh, are, the, are the various procurers. Um, and the larger the blue, is the larger the indebtedness of the hospital. The larger the yellow 
is, the larger, is larger the amount of the unpaid invoices to those companies who delivered services or goods uh, to hospitals. Uh, so, the, so with this chart, we understood that uh, it is the exact same 16 or 14 companies who provided goods and services for hospitals that were in the hands, for 100 hospitals that were in the hands of different municipalities. To just looking on the indebtedness chart, we understood the market structure of hospital procurement. So we introduced joint national procurement on this, uh, on this chart, and we saved 20% of gas, uh, we, we saved 15% on uh, electricity, and 38% on the cost of pharmaceuticals. Uh, and on the size of these three yellow dots, uh, we recognize that they are sort of the larger yellow dots. Uh, we understood that those three companies were financing the hospital indebtedness like banks. And that kind of operation is illegal in the public sector, so I had an offer to them. Uh, they, of course, they wanted to mask uh, the issue, but I offered them, fine, we pay 50% of, the, uh, of the debts and do not ask any more questions. And, uh, and I couldn't even finish the sentence before they said yes. Uh, so the, uh, and those who were indebted to fewer companies with larger amounts, this was a monopoly circle. Uh, and you know, uh, we saved on the, three, on the size of those three dots, we saved 2.5 billion uh, Hungarian forints, which is 8 million euros. And we saved, this is a one-time saving, and we saved 24 million euros, which is an annual recurrent save. Uh, and we had a new business model for hospitals. We had a new joint national procurement model, and we had one arrest. Uh, this is the, uh, I, I did not, you know, it was not necessarily, it was not necessarily the consequence of this analysis, but it was uh, uh, that we turned the, turn the attention toward, towards transparency. Uh, and you see, gas was procured at 100 foreign per cubic meter level, uh, and most of the hospitals were above that. And this guy, uh, this guy was arrested because all their procurement prices were uh, uh, much higher than the others, and that was not just by accident. So the next one is, uh, is political gaming. And uh, you know, in university, uh, in, in our university, we have a control freak uh, university chancellor. And he could use it for positive purposes, this kind of analysis that, you, that I will present to you. Uh, but, uh, and we, uh, but we had to use it in emergency. Uh, we, you know, we had to balance our economy uh, and, our, uh, and our healthcare budget in the deepest times of the crisis with introducing some measures on pharma, pharma, prices of pharmaceuticals. And we did, uh, and, uh, we did introduce a special tax on innovative molecules that were still protected by the patent time. Uh, the Spani this, is, this is called the Spanish model, uh, but, they were on the they, but those who were on the market uh, uh, without competition since six years, uh, those, were, uh, those were receiving an extra tax. And one of the, one of the companies, one of the insulin producing companies said, fine, uh, there is international price comparison, so if I lower the price with that 10% tax, uh, then I lose more, on the hung, uh, lose more on the German market, thanks to the international price comparison, than the size of the Hungarian market. So I pull out from the subsidized market. And uh, you know, this was three weeks before Christmas, so I had to think about, Jesus, I have to, have to change the, uh, the medication of 50,000 diabetic patients. Uh, and I was looking for the publication database because I wanted to talk to the uh, key opinion leaders uh, of, the, of diabetes care in Hungary. And those are in the central, uh, central locations of the charts. Yeah, uh, these guys have the most patients and these guys uh, are the key opinion leaders in the Hungarian diabetes care. Uh, but you know, uh, we recognize that this is so centralized we also looked on uh, the prescription habits of these, uh, of these doctors. Given, and given that uh, the insulin uh, in this case was 
25% more expensive than the other two producers' insulin, uh, we started to think that there must be some, there must be some informal incentive changing hands uh, in order to in, uh, influence the prescription habits. And indeed, we found that these are the, the red, blue, and green, these are the producers. And you see that uh, the, uh, the, pole, uh, uh, the pole next to the green producers, uh, these are the most frequent prescriptions. So the prescription habits were leaning forward uh, the more expensive sort of blackmailing, uh, uh, blackmailing pharmaceutical company. And you know, we showed these charts on the meeting of the Hungarian medical societies, uh, and in two days I received the phone call. I received the phone call from the company that they solved the issue, they repackaged the stuff, so they were masking the price decrease and, uh, and they stay on the market. So this was political gaming. We used uh, the ingredients were health insurance, prescription data, and publication data. And you know, here the results were votes, because imagine a scandal of changing medication of 50,000 patients three weeks before Christmas. Uh, of course, we saved lives. Of course, we stabilized the pharma market, so we saved money. And you know, uh, this is, uh, that's why it is so colorful, but this is the hallucinogen, uh, uh, um, uh, stuff that every politician looks for is an increased power, get, power base because they started to understand that we know much more and we understand much more uh, about the wheeling and dealing and the informal incentives of the healthcare system than they, uh, than they understood before. So this is, this is uh, quite interesting. Uh, uh, and you know, here the in ingredients are contracts, financial aspects of EU programs, uh, financial statements of, uh, uh, of EU programs. We could do the same and we have done the same for FP7 and Horizon 2020 programs. Uh, it would be fun to, fun to do it with the EU agricultural subsidy uh, issues. Uh, and uh, we used uh, uh, the company database. This is uh, Hungarian data on the, uh, on the science funding agencies, the resource map of Hungarian science funding. Uh, you could understand the importance of the various in, uh, agencies, and you could understand the radius uh, of the, uh, of the uh, of the uh, various agencies, but you could also see the concentration of funding. Um, you could, um, this one we used for understanding how the, Hungarian, uh, how the Hungarian research companies or research agencies or universities are connected to a larger universe uh, of uh, European uh, research uh, agencies in molecular uh, medicine. Uh, again, this, this, is, this could help the Hungarian agencies to connect themselves better uh, to the focal points of knowledge. So we use this analysis for, uh, for advancing science, uh, but we could also use it for transparency. This chart was done on a specific, uh, specific area of, uh, of development funding, and you know, we were looking for uh, we were looking for evidence whether there is uh, there is uh, connectivity. Uh, there is a connection between companies who are asking more extra funding for construction costs uh, and and who are breaking the deadlines. And yes, indeed, we found uh, a significant concentration. Uh, of uh, significant concentration of various companies involved in development projects who were sort of, uh, sort of uh, lobbying forward larger funding and uh, extra funding and, uh, and breaking the deadlines. This was very important for us uh, to pushing uh, the, uh, the absorption and to push uh, the completion, the relevant completion and good quality completion uh, of development projects. So we, we started to use simple ingredients uh, to achieve development objectives. The future is here. What you see here is the, all the diseases reported to the Hungarian Health Insurance Fund. Which disease 
is connected to which disease. And surprise, it is the cardiovascular diseases that are in the focal points of the comorbidity network. Uh, and you know, this is very important for health services to predict what kind of capacities do I have to develop in the future. This is very important for universities, which is the knowledge, which are the skills that are needed to treat the most frequent diseases. And when you look on which treatment follows which treatment, uh, you can also help the hospital designers uh, what kind of logistics they have to plan uh, into hospitals. So we, are, so we are thinking about these issues. But if we're going back to this chart, you know, this is good for uh, if you put genomic data behind this, uh, you understand the patterns of comorbidity, uh, and you understand the genomic patterns of comorbidity, uh, then you uh, then, uh, then you uh, can predict capacities. But this is personalized medicine, and if you are targeting the disease with cure, you can target poisoning genomically. So there are shadows of, uh, of this understanding uh, as well. So the infinity. You see organizational culture here. Uh, this, guy's on the top, this guy on the top, this is publication network. Who publishes with whom? This is gastroenterology. This guy is a pediatric gastroenterologist linked to many others. This, this team here is a pancreas research team from a university. If you take any one of them, if you take any one of them out, the other four is still in the middle of the, of the publication network. This is a very well embedded reference, uh, uh, reference center. But this guy here, a traditional professor who is sitting on a pyramid, um, he, he demands all his employees to put him as a co-author to any publication. So you see the organizational culture in a publication uh, uh, database. Um, this is a joke. Uh, this is done from the, this is done from the sample, uh, this is done from the analysis of, uh, of a patient uh, website, a patient blog. Which medicine is mentioned which, with which medicine? And you know, there was a joke of a neurologist. Uh, a patient comes here with, who has incontinencia. And the guy cannot help, and I understand that my time is over. Uh, if, if there is two or three more minutes, I could show, show the rest. So the, guy, so the guy cannot help the patient, so he prescribes him, uh, he prescribes him a relaxant. And the patient disappears. And three weeks later, they, they meet on a bus. Uh, and, uh, and the doctor asks, oh, uh, so, so your problems are solved? Yes, 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 says the patient. So you do not pee in anymore? Yes, I still do, but who cares? Uh, and and this, is a, this is a patient uh, forum. Which medicine is mentioned with which medicine? This is a chronic, uh, chronic bowel disease. This is a gastro drug and a relaxant. So, it is, so they mentioned the gastro drug and the relaxant, relaxant together. So you can even find jokes in a simple, uh, simple forum of, uh, of patients. This one is more dangerous. This is a Facebook analysis of, uh, Facebook analysis of anti-HPV vaccination uh, uh, communication. You can use it positively. You can understand who are the key opinion leaders on Facebook and what is the uh, on anti-HPV activism. You can see their network, uh, but you can also see which are the six computers uh, you want to shut off if you want to silence them. Uh, so there are temptations of, uh, of knowing too much, but this is Facebook, and uh, we can do this. You can see the structure. This is even more dangerous. This is, you can do public health activism or the outreach of public health activism on Facebook. But you can also see how widespread uh, an, uh, an agenda, a, a political activism agenda on Facebook. This is real-time stuff. Uh, this is happening in Hungary now, and we were curious to see what is the outreach uh, of, that, uh, of that agenda. We did not do it with negative intentions. We did it with, uh, we did it with research intentions. But you can do very interesting stuff with data. 
uh, for example, um, you see there is, this is the, uh, this is the pharma production network. You know, some ingredients of the pharmaceuticals are only produced in two or three countries, India, China. And it is enough. If, if there is a public hygiene problem in, in that one particular production site, then the entire uh, pharma production network collapses. So it can, uh, it can show you the resilience uh, of, uh, of health security networks uh, around the globe. And when we are thinking about whether the EU still has the computer center in one of the Greek islands, that could be a very interesting resilience test to, to save that. So you know, uh, now you understand and I'm a very pro data utilization person, uh, and I know the limits, uh, but you know, it is, uh, it is donate blood and three, three save three lives. And you know, data protection debate should be elevated to a higher level because the genomic issue is a really threatening issue. Uh, but, uh, and, and here the data protection fetishism does not help. Uh, so we have to start to think whether data is a public or private asset because it can save lives and public money. And possibly the Estonians recognized or the Finns recognized that give blood, so we, we, we call blood ver, and the, and, the and, and the Estonians call it very, and I think we call these, and you call it vesi, and, and we were fishing together, so, so we call fish hull, and you call it kala, and uh, you call this stuff sarf, sarvi, I think, we call it sarf. So thank you very much for the attention. Well, quite true. We really recognize all those words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Who wants to ask something from Miklas and, and about Hungary? But perhaps I will start with just asking one question. I mean, these are great sort of case studies you brought out. Can I ask, has it now become a regular practice to, to exactly have these sort of methods and this sort of thinking and sort of engraved in sort of that health system? So case studies are, and pilots are always easy to do, but is it, has it become more systematic? So it is, um, so you know, I spent my four years in uh, managing by telling the truth. And sometimes it is quite painful, as you could see. Uh, and there are a lot of interest working against management by telling the truth. Uh, and there are a lot of silo interests in defending the data uh, because that's their, that's their power base. So it was, it was really tough. Uh, I had a very uh, strong commitment and I received support. Uh, unfortunately, I did not have time enough to make these, uh, make these systems or analytic systems or algorithms online uh, or real-time uh, analytic systems. But now I'm involved in various, uh, I'm, I, that's, that's one of the activities that I kept and, and, I, and I support some agencies in government uh, that, uh, that are developing this type of tools as real-time uh, real uh, analytic tools. Okay. And even if they don't do, I, I have good fantasy <laughs> to access data and, uh, and, and, I, still, and I still <laughs> manage by telling the truth. Yeah. All right. So, no questions to Hungary, really? How often do you see? There's one there? All right. Great. Ayn. I am Alex, Chief Information and uh, Innovation Officer at the Ministry of Social Affairs here in Estonia. Great stuff, Professor Soska. I have a question. In your view, what comes first? Data which relieves things that could be changed or a political will that is in search of data that would help them to do stuff? I think it is. Uh, no, number one is political will uh, because um, we had unique patient ID in our health insurance system and we had a DRG system, which is Diagnosis Related Groups Payment System for hospitals, so we, have, we really had vast amount of data. But if you do not have that, you can start to use mobile cellular information to see how much time a patient spent in a hospital geolocation. So I think it is political will and, um, and, uh, and management and analytic creativity uh, that is needed. That, that comes first, and then you can access data. All right. Thank you. Thank you.